<laughs> okay, hello everyone in a new video. So in this one we are going to start uh, part 1 of chapter 11 which is the chapter of mechanical waves for grade 8 students. Then let me write the title of this chapter. Then, as usual, we start the chapter by some definitions. Then, whenever we introduce certain quantities, then we can introduce formulas that relate uh, these quantities with each other. Let me start by section number one, which is defining the periodic motion. Then the periodic motion is the motion. So let me say periodic motion or even vibratory motion. So what is meant by the periodic motion? So from its name, periodic, so it, mu it must involve a period. And the word motion means that something is moving. And this is known as the vibratory motion, for example, is the motion that repeats itself. for a given period of time or after after a certain period Then what are some examples of periodic motion? Let me consider the following documents. In the first one, we have the hands of the clock. So if you consider the one that is related to the second, we know that each second, this arm completes one revolution around this number, which means that this arm is of periodic motion and the period is given by 60 seconds. This period is given by, the period of this arm is given by, uh, so 24 uh, 12 hours and this one is one hour which is 60 minutes okay now as for this document this is a swinging pendulum so we know that if this pendulum or this ball starts from this point then it must reach this point which is the point b if this is a then from a to b and back to a so this is a periodic motion or a vibratory motion because it's repeating itself for a given period of time the same for this wheel the ferris wheel so uh, for a so for example suppose that this cabin starts from the point a after a certain period of time it will complete one revolution and will reach back this point so this is a periodic motion the same for this road which is fixed here so if you consider this point starting from here then if we vibrate this this road will undergo vibratory or periodic motion after a certain period of time a will move to b then back to a and the same for the pendulum of the clock. So all of these examples are periodic motion. It's any motion that repeats itself after a certain period of time. So now we are interested in calculating the period. And recall that whenever we say periodic motion, I mean vibratory motion. So we are interested in the period. And by this, let me move to the sec second section, which is section number two, the period and the frequency.
Now, first we need to specify a periodic motion. So let's suppose that given a periodic motion or a vibratory motion of a period T so the period is denoted by capital T and of a frequency F so the period is denoted by capital T and the frequency is denoted by small f then the frequency and the period are related by We have that the period is equal to the 1 over the frequency or let me say and the frequency is equal to the 1 over the period. Okay, And we know that for any formula in physics we can construct a triangle. So what's the triangle of this formula? We can use either this formula or this, or this formula and this is because if you use this one then the triangle would be given by here because we have divide and then the period will be at the bottom here we have one and this is the frequency and if we use this one so here the frequency at the bottom one at the top and this is the period t so both the triangles are at the same because we can reverse or switch t and f it would be the same so let me write the triangle of this formula this is the period this is the frequency and this is one Notice that previously we used to construct a triangle whenever we have three quantities, but here we have two quantities, they are given by the period and the frequency. So we can relate them with each other like this, and instead here of placing another quantity, we can simply place the number one. Then let me say where capital T stands for the period. of the periodic motion its symbol is given by s which stands for seconds and f is the frequency of the periodic motion And its symbol is given by HZ, so this is a new unit which stands for Hertz. So the symbol of the unit of the frequency is HZ, which stands for Hertz. Now let me give the following examples. Now suppose that the period is given by 0 0.5 seconds. So what is the value of the frequency? So recall that the frequency or the period are the reciprocal, reciprocals of each other. Then the frequency is simply 1 over the period, which is 1 over 0 0.5. And this is equal to 2. And because the period is expressed in the SI, so the value of the frequency will be in the SI, which is Hertz. Then the frequency is given by 2 Hertz. So I didn't... I didn't uh, indicate what does the period and the frequency represent. Now I will uh, write them here. Now let me consider another example. Now if the frequency is equal to 10 Hz, what is the value of the period? So the period in this case would be given by this, the reciprocal, which is given by 1 over f, which is 1 over 10, which is equal to 0 0.1 seconds. Now another example that we can consider, which is interesting, suppose that the period is equal to 2 minutes. What about the frequency? We know that they are reciprocal to each other. But the thing is that we cannot say that the frequency is equal to the 1 of the period, which is equal to 1 over 2. This is completely wrong. We always need to consider the SI unit. Okay, So here, so we know that the frequency is 1 over the period, but here we need to be careful. 
Before we calculate the frequency, we need to convert the period to the seconds. So the period, which is equal to 2 minutes, and recall that each minute includes 60 seconds. So this is 2 multiplied by 60, so this is equal to 120 seconds. Now we are ready to calculate the frequency. So the frequency would be given by 1 over 120 and not 2 because it's expressed in that side. And the value of the frequency in this case would be given by so let me check it would be given by zero point zero zero eighty three and here the 3 is not ending, but it's okay, so this is it. So on and so forth. Now let me indicate what does the frequency and the period represent, and let me say that the title of this section is another method to calculate the period and the frequency. Then now, in order to introduce this method, we need to indicate the physical significance behind the period and the frequency. So for sure, let's suppose that we have a periodic motion. And let me say here, so whenever we talk about the periodic motion, we can talk about the period and we can talk about the frequency. So now what does the period represent? The period represent is the time required to complete one oscillation whereas the frequency is the number of oscillations in one second and as you can notice if you refer to these two definitions you can notice that the period and the frequency are somehow related to each other in the following manner so let me consider the following example that we have a vibratory motion or a periodic motion that uh, it, perf it performs 200 vibrations for example in uh, let's say for example uh, six seconds let me say five seconds okay so based on this relation this is not an equality it's not an equation it's a relation similar to the relation between the, the magnitude and the length of a vector so here we have a number of vibrations related to a certain period of time which is seconds so how can one calculate the period and the frequency so previously we have seen that the period and the frequency can be determined from the following relation that the period is 1 over half or the frequency is 1 over the period but here we don't know the, f the frequency or the period in order to determine the other the thing is that if you want to determine the frequency to calculate the frequency So we will copy this relation and we will say that 200 vibrations 
are related to 5 seconds. Now what about 1 second? It corresponds to how many vibrations? And the number of vibrations here will be corresponding to the frequency of. Okay? So whenever we want to determine the frequency, so instead of the number of vibrations, we will write F, which corresponds for one second. Now in this case, we can calculate F using the rule of three. And F in this case is given by one multiplied by 200 and divided by five. So this is equal to 40. Everything is expressed in the SI because this is in seconds and this is in seconds. It will be given by Hertz. Now to calculate the period, now the period for example can be deduced from this one, we can say that the period is equal to 1 over half, but if we, if we want to refer to this definition to calculate the period, we can copy this relation between the number of vibrations and the second we can see that so this is 200 vibrations corresponds to 5 seconds what about the number of vibrations so let me say what is the time required so here we will write capital T required to complete one vibration so in this case the period can be determined by replacing 5 seconds by the period t and now we can cross multiply so the period would be given by 1 multiplied by 5 divided by 200 so if we cross multiply 1 by 5 divided by 200 and this is given by 0 0.025 seconds and here indeed you can check that both, both values verify the relation given by frequency is equal to 1 over the period so I repeat suppose that we have the following relation for a vibratory motion which stands for the number of vibrations for a given period of time the frequency can be uh, can be calculated by replacing the number of vibrations by f and the, num and the value of time by one second and we can calculate the frequency and for the period it can be determined by replacing the value of time by the period t and instead of the number of a given number of vibrations by one vibration and we can calculate the period so let me consider also another example suppose that we have 30 vibrations in 3 seconds and we need to calculate the period and the frequency so as simple as that our answer would be so to calculate the frequency, we copy the relation as it is. We will see that 30 vibrations corresponds to 3 seconds because we need to calculate the frequency. So the rule says that instead of the number of vibrations, we will place half. Instead of the time, we will place 1 second. And this reflects the fact that the definition of the frequency is given by the number of oscillations in one second so by oscillation we mean vibration now we cross multiply so f would be given by 1 multiplied by 30 divided by 3 which is then everything is expressed in the SI the SI net of the frequency is hertz now as for the period so as a first step we copy the relation as it is we say that the 30 vibration corresponds to 3 seconds. Instead of time, we'll place the period T and this corresponds for one vibration as the rule says here. And this corresponds for the period is the time required to complete one oscillation. So in this case, we are now ready to cross multiply. And then 1 multiplied by 3 divided by 30. And this would be given by 0 0.1. Everything is expressed in the SI. So the SI unit of the period is seconds. Let me also give another example which is also interesting. Now suppose that we have 900 vibrations 
corresponding for 8 minutes. And now we need to calculate the period and the frequency. So our answer would be, now here you need to be very careful, before we use this relation, this value of time must be converted to the SI, and because we know that 8 minutes correspond to 8 multiplied by 60, which is equal to 480 seconds, now we can use this relation, which is given by 900 vibrations, correspond to 480 seconds because the rule that we have applied is related to the value of time which is given by seconds and not minutes okay now we can use the following relation so let's start by calculating the frequency so we can say that 900 vibrations corresponds to 480 seconds in order to use this one in order to calculate the frequency so the vibrations must be replaced by f and the value must be replaced by one second now if we cross multiply then f would be equal to 1 multiplied by 900 divided by 480 this would be given by 1.875 everything is expressed in the SI so the value of the frequency will be in the SI which is Hertz now as for the period We know that 900 vibrations corresponds to 480 seconds. In order to calculate the period, time will be replaced by capital T, and vibration will be uh, will be replaced by one vibrations because one vibration because we know that the period is the time required to complete one oscillation. Now we can cross multiply. Then T would be given by 1 multiplied by 480 divided by 9, 900. So this is equal to 0 0.53. Everything is expressed in that size, so the value of the period would be in that size, which is seconds. Okay. Now let me move to the next section, which is section number 4, the wavelength. So wavelength is the length of the wave. This symbol here is lambda. So this is called lambda. This is the way we spell it. Lambda. So it is L-A-M-B-D-A. And this is a Greek letter. So in order to, to indicate what does lambda represent the wavelength, we need to consider a wave. This is the wave here shown in red. So First, let me say that the highest point on the wave is said to be the crest. So this is a crest, this is another crest. In order to determine the wavelength, we need to uh, specify two consecutive crests. So we don't, con we don't skip a crest. This is a crest, this is another crest. Now we can grab our ruler. The distance between this point, which is point A, corresponding for the first crest in this wave, and the second crest in this wave, which is the point B, the distance separating the points A and B is said to be the wavelength lambda. And the, lamb and the wavelength, the assignment of the wavelength, is meters. Then let me say that the wavelength lambda is the distance between or the distance separating or between two consecutive crests okay so the crest is the maximum point reached by the curve and for example we can talk about the amplitude 
The amplitude is the distance from the equilibrium position to the maximum point reached by the curve. So that's it for me in this video guys. In part 2 we are going to introduce the speed, the relation between the speed, the frequency, the wavelength and the period. And we'll start solving exercises on this chapter.